Hello, hello! Welcome to Ivana's Noshk Life. Today we will talk about a topic that so many of you ask me to cover so many times and finally, finally I am ready to talk about that. This is about PhD research proposal. How actually to write a good PhD research proposal? And I decided that, yes, I can just do that, but it would be even more valuable, valuable, valuable to first talk. There is also, I don't know if you've seen, but in some of the PhD vacancies, like PhD position uh, opened on the internet uh, in Norwegian universities, what I found that some of them, they want a research statement to be submitted together with other documents. So that's why today, in today's video, we will not only cover PhD research proposals, but we firstly also will talk about PhD research statement. What does it mean? And what is the difference between the research statement and PhD research proposal? Which one is written when? And uh, how to make both of them the best quality possible? And that's why we will talk about IMRAT structure and what are the good research questions because this information you will need to know to make a really great PhD research proposal. So let's start. Let's first talk about difference in PhD research statement and PhD research proposal. Um, for instance, now it is open uh, many different PhD positions at NTNU, and I just as a comparison took two. In the first one, uh, there is uh, no requirements as a research statement, but, but in the other one that is actually in Jurich, where I live, there is a requirement to submit a research statement. So what, what, the, what is the research statement, right? So research statement, um, it is much smaller version of the PhD research proposal. And it also has a bit different structure. It's more something like it has some bits of the research proposal, but it also has a bits of cover letter if you apply to regular job. Why is that? Because in the uh, research statement, uh, it ha it's supposed to be really short. Uh, typically, they will uh, write down the number of pages they are limiting you to. So uh, in this case, it is three pages max. And I think in majority of the cases, you will see the same requirement. So it is a short version while the PhD research proposal, it can be like 10, 15 pages. Uh, also depends on the university department and people you're working with. So in the research statement, what we focus? First of all, our research interests. Second of all, it is initial plan. So how are you planning to execute uh, your PhD, like your research in the coming three years? Then you also need to des describe your education, previous, previous research, previous like your competence, how it's actually uh, related to the project where you will do a PhD or like your PhD project in general. And also you need to write down why are you so suited for this position. This part of information typically we do not put in the PhD research proposal. So we don't have these parts why you're suited for this position or how your previous uh, education competence uh, is connected or related to the project. This is what we don't put in PhD research proposal. So to make sure. And most typically, a PhD research proposal is not written beforehand um, when you apply for PhD. But it's really rare cases where you need to have it beforehand. And typically to write a good one, you will need to have additional information but we will talk a bit more about this later. So just keep it in mind. So this is kind of about this research statement. But then the question is, okay, if let's say that this like personal parts, it depends on you and it's like how are you suited it just from inside of you, you need to write. And then about uh, how your education is uh, related to the project. 
Then the question is, what is the project, right? Where to find this information? So this information, typically it is provided in the part about the position. So in PhD vacancy, you will have a part about the position and there it will be a description of what is kind of expected or what is wanted. But sometimes it could be not clear enough for you or maybe some parts that you are like, oh, if I had a bit more details, that would help me a lot to make a great research statement. Yes? What to do then? So I would recommend you to make a first draft. So sit and write uh, your plans, like your interests first, then initial plan. Initial plan should have, from my perspective, briefly, but should have information about which research questions you think could be interesting. Then it can be one tool, like a main question, something like that, that you want to focus on in the coming three years. Then the methodologies, methodology, so the methods that you are planning to use, like which type of experiments you think would be needed to conduct in order to answer that question. And also your publication plan for the three years, just an assumption. So what you would consider. So this is for me like initial plan. What you're focusing on, uh, maybe like two paragraphs of what is uh, already published related to the topic, then the question, then the methods, why those methods and not the other ones. And typically, I would recommend you to, fo to use some methods that you experienced in, mixed in together with something uh, slightly new, so it could be good. And then in the end, uh, uh, you finalize it, it can be a chart with the plan of publications, so how many articles and approximate some uh, journals or something. Uh, you could mention, depends like how comfortable you are with that information. And then you can keep uh, saying that, and then you, by planning it in such a way, so you actually can ma mention uh, why you're suited for this project because you describe it. And uh, for instance, uh, how your education is related to what you described early. This is like the first draft. Then I would come back, read it, and find some stuff that could be improved, that is still like a bit shaky or ambiguous or could be done a bit better. And then you actually, in every PhD position vacancy, you will have a contact persons listed in the, like really below, like in the last bottoms of the vacancy description. And there it's supposed to be associate professor or professor listed as a contact person. Contact this uh, professor with the questions like to, if they could clarify for you small details. And then depending on this description in about the position, you can, for instance, uh, ask um, what could be like application area? Is the PhD a part of ongoing project or like, a, or it's uh, not a part of any projects at all? Uh, is there any, you can also check actually this professor and see his publications and what he has done and also use this information to write your research statement and to make a good questions. So this is after you receive information from this uh, professor, come back and rewrite your research statement based on the more details that he provided to you, shape it a little, a little bit, and then you are ready to submit it. So, but still we haven't covered about research questions, right? So now we will go to the next topic. It is about PhD research proposal and focus on the structure first. PhD research proposal can be written in different ways. And typically I would recommend you, this is, I didn't do it exactly like that, but I would recommend you to try to keep in, um, in mind in rod structure and try uh, in some way to integrate it and use it. Of course, you will not have all of the parts, but still the flow in your document needs to be very similar. So firstly, generically, what is IMRAD? Uh, for those maybe you don't know, but this is how we call uh, introduction, methods, result, and discussion. Introduction, methods, result, and discussion. So this is how we name this structure. 
And in reality, this is really good st structure because it gives you really nice flow that everyone is used to. And let's see in 2015 how looked my PhD research description. This is my here PhD, PhD project description that I actually wrote in, uh, like submitted in November 2015. So almost six years ago. Can you imagine that? And uh, actually, when I finished, my topic sounded completely different. But this is kind of a preliminary estimation of what you're about to do. So this is what uh, I submitted when I applied for my PhD position. As you can see, I started right away with the background and I did uh, some small literature review where I started with the typical introduction of what is additive manufacturing uh, and then uh, what are the key aspects of additive manufacturing, what uh, researchers uh, in the world uh, are working on, uh, why it is so important, and so on. So then, as you can see, I started separating it in my um, micro kind of topics. Um, you can also do this because you see here it's like almost one uh, part. But if you have a more precise project description or if you already have talked to with your supervisor, you can make it uh, look a bit better than this. Maybe you will have a bit less topics than I had. So then you can see um, I focused uh, on, on literature review on especially material and mechanical properties of finished parts, then on long process time. Uh, through part homogeneity. So this is what I saw that is important for the project where I was a PhD. And then also I needed to highlight, uh, and it's the same about you, you need to highlight some uh, lack of knowledge or lack of research uh, that is focusing on some specific things uh, in your topic. And also you need to show, it would be nice uh, if you can find articles in which people uh, emphasize the importance of uh, things that are not investigated. And uh, for instance, they say that it should be done in the future. Quite many articles have something like that in, in the introductions. Quite often it would be in the discussion parts. So this is where you need to check it out. And as you can see, um, the very critical part, it's uh, do not provide information as a lists. Uh, you need to provide it um, uh, in a way like you describe it. And also uh, you need to rephrase stuff. So kind of read a couple of articles and then write together uh, some small uh, paragraph on the topic and just reference uh, the common statements uh, in the end of the uh, sentences. This is uh, my recommendation to you. So as you can see, it's kind of every single aspect of like every single step of uh, I am. I actually try to cover a bit uh, individually. And for instance, this post processes of Finnish parts of M, it's extremely small, but I still include it. Uh, I could have provided it uh, uh, joined together with uh, long process time, for instance. So it's like what I see now. It's actually, I can see that it's uh, very broad, very many different small things. So I could have picked uh, less topics, uh, but go a bit more deeper. Uh, as you can see, I have 11 pages. So what I see now, actually, I would recommend myself back for 2015 uh, to go maybe a bit more in the details, but smaller uh, subset of topics. I think it's too broad. So for now, I know that it's too broad. And then actually control and optimization of process and product parameters. This is more or less uh, related to what I was about to do. So that's why I think all of these topics uh, beforehand, I could have um, put them a bit differently and uh, less um, emphasis on them. And tolerances. It also was uh, together with control and optimization. So... This is what I did in my background, so kind of literature review, where I needed to emphasize what is done and uh, what is not done, and then what is not done, I kind of representing the object. Don't say that I like it very much how I wrote here. I would recommend myself now to go back there and write down kind of preliminary research questions.
it's hard to define them in the very beginning, but it's really nice to have two, three research questions and then the main goal. Then it shows that, especially if you have a three years, it would help you. So I would go a bit deeper in the background. And then instead of this, like, following subjects is uh, proposed to consider to have less of the topics and that's why less of the research questions. Uh, so it would look much better. So this was, I'm not happy how it's done now in my uh, project description, but in 2015, I didn't know all of this stuff and I didn't know what is a PhD, right? And I saw that I have three years, I can do so many different things. In reality, um, it takes a lot of time. You need to read a lot. Uh, you have a different challenges about equipment, using lab, and so on and so on. So uh, typically, the first proposal, it's not uh, the same as uh, what you deliver. So uh, more you work in the topic, um, more your work is shaped and also more knowledge you get, uh, you understand in the very beginning what maybe was not that good. So for instance, each of these topics on its own could be research for some number of years. So uh, that's why it's like what I understand now, but I think before that, I didn't understand the complexity of uh, or like how much time actually takes to do all the stuff. So as you can see, uh, there is many different topics and some of them on its own can take up to four years and maybe even longer to work on. But I see already that I covered the second one that I was working on. And I think that uh, I also, to some extent, not like this, I actually used the machine learning models, but for defining new tolerance uh, tolerances. Uh, so actually it's close to it, but still uh, in the result, I worked in the different stuff. So this is like what is funny that it helped me, but uh, I said that I didn't do that good job by that time and it happens. So scope, this is what I said about limitations. Uh, it's a scope. So uh, for instance, in my case, I needed to say which type of um, additive manufacturing process I will be working on and which type of material because I needed it to limit myself. I couldn't cover everything and also we didn't have equipment to do everything. So this is uh, where scope or limitations of the work. I would recommend you to try to think of some stuff and include it as well. Uh, so, for instance, type of manufacturing process, is it a scoop? What is that? So this is like not good. Do not do like uh, this. Mm, the same type, types of materials. So if you have a scope, just keep writing further. Uh, do not do these separations as I did. This is uh, wrong. Uh, also, I think this is a part of the scope where I try to <laughs> define uh, which material properties I will be looking at. Um, being honest, I, it's uh, again too much and it will require you a lot of um, experimental work uh, that is expensive. And this is, I didn't know, the same mechanical properties. I think that I've seen in different articles what people did and I just listed everything what I saw. Uh, but I also use like what is considered in the study. Um, in reality, I worked uh, only with four mechanical properties. It was elongation and break, yield, yield stress, elastic modulus, and tensile strength. That's all. Other stuff, it's like completely different testing equipment. Then you need to have to evaluate it. So, and these four, they result uh, out of one testing machine. So these small things, but at that time I didn't know, but as you can see, it still went through key. The same on process parameters. This is kind of, I think that I mainly show how I work with the literature and when I found like what you need to focus on and different conditions uh, that you need to look at. Finally, then I came to the research methods. So all of this stuff and how to on, like how to do research uh, on these eight topics, I wanted to present the research methods. As you can see, I listed that I will uh, design uh, 3D models with complex geometry. This was the wrong one. I don't like to do CAD and I actually didn't design anything at all. Uh, <clears throat> literature review I listed and I, I said that few stages. Printing out uh, models that are designed. Uh, this is uh, experiment, you can call it. Then 
testing the build model uh, with various X-ray techniques. I didn't use this one at all. I only did mechanical testing. That's all. And also dimensional measurement. So because we actually didn't have even equipment to do this. But I didn't uh, know that that well by that time. I also didn't do finite element analysis because on my first year of PhD in the literature review, I actually found that for my material that I'm working with, it requires material models so that people throughout 20 years couldn't develop uh, the complete full that are useful, only partly covering some stuff, but they were not like you, you are not able to use them in the practice. So this is where my machine learning idea came. So as you can see, I did so many different failures in my uh, project description, but this part I like a lot, expected results. So even like understanding of some topics, then what type of factors or frameworks, metrics, algorithms, all of this needs to be listed here. And also what do you do with the data and uh, you know, as you can see, even uh, I was considering that my data could be used for creating new standards. Uh, very ambitious, I would say so, but not realistic. And uh, the work plan that I proposed when I was applying, so I knew that I will have 25% uh, of teaching. So as you can see, 25% uh, of teaching, it means that either you like the full year that you are working, or it is 25% um, of your time in a year, that is 1,680 hours approximately. So we'll find out what is 25% of that, that you designate uh, to the teaching uh, every semester in my case, I was planning like that. Literature review I was planning to do throughout uh, all my PhD and then like taking courses because in PhD in Norway, you had, uh, you need to finish like to take courses for 30 credits at PhD level or 20 credits at uh, PhD level and then 10 credits can be done at master level or self-study course that you define yourself as your supervisor. And then like my methods that I defined uh, at which times I was planning to do them. And also, as you can see, conference and journal proceeding when I'm planning to publish articles. So this is also, you can see uh, journals typically take time about like a year. In conferences, it can be a bit uh, quicker. And then when I was planning to write thesis, <laughs> this is actually, I didn't do anything in 2016, 17 and 18, actually, focused mainly in 2019, I was writing. But I still would recommend, uh, I know other PhDs who did it uh, throughout the whole PhD, and um, it was good. Because uh, in the last uh, year, if you, for me, I used articles kind of as drafts. Uh, but actually, uh, if you don't do it throughout the year, you will forget what you did in 2016 when you are at 2019. This is like absolutely sure. So you need either to have some notes or like you need to register and uh, your discussion. So like, what do you think? What have you read? And with the good references, because then it will be hard to find it. And then defense. So this is like what I was planning. And you can see like reference list, 21 article that I read to write this project proposal. So as you can see, I have made some mistakes. For instance, here, I would recommend you to have main objective and research questions, to have less topics than I had, be more realistic. And then in the background to focus a bit more deeper on those uh, topics that you want to work on, uh, and not like every single thing inside the area. So this was also my mistake. So because I didn't know what needs to be there. So I tried to put whatever I could. So that's why I try to understand the description of the PhD vacancy, uh, information about PhD. And then uh, if uh, you miss some details, uh, Ask your ask professor if you need to submit the project description beforehand, before you start PhD. If uh, you need to, because uh, at the end of you, you also will need to submit another one after you. Uh, 
uh, Stroud PhD on Faculty of Engineering, for instance. Uh, we take uh, one generic course, which uh, every PhD needs to take, and it's not included this 30 credits. And in this course, uh, we actually, as a result, we kind of write again a PhD project description that needs to be a bit more realistic than this one and try to make it like 10 pages. So um, I hope that uh, I, um, like I showed the main thing. So I would call it like introduction and have some background on the topic. Uh, I would add here research questions in the end and limitations. And then the new part, I would make the same methodology with some methods and showing the connection to research questions. This is what I would do now when I went through the process and I understand a bit more what is to be a PhD. What are good research questions? I see so many times that students really struggle with this thing, like to define research questions. And I remember back then when I was a student, uh, I had a really nice, nice professor who explained to me really quickly and easy what is a good research question. And now I will share with you this small secret. So your research question need to be formulated in such way that you cannot answer yes or no and you cannot answer like really in a short sentence. So a good research question is a question that can be answered only through the discussion. Uh, I want to give you a couple of examples um, of bad and good research questions. So the bad research question, it could be, is higher energy in the machine better? Is it popular to work on additive manufacturing? So this is very bad question, research questions. But good research questions would be, which process parameters have larger effect on the mechanical properties and how to control them? Or how to control and manage variation during 3D printing process. So as you can see on like this, is they, those two are good examples. They are, they are good research questions. So this is all for me. Thank you very much for watching until the end. But remember that on Sunday, 25th July uh, at 5 p.m. CT time zone. I will be waiting for you to come and ask me questions about PhD uh, descri project description. So I would be happy to see you. And uh, thank you very much for watching until the end. Don't forget to like the video so more people will see the content and uh, they could benefit of it. It helps a lot. And uh, write your questions uh, or comments if you cannot come, but you still want to ask me something, leave the comments under this video. I will check them out and prepare answers to your questions and we'll give them on Sunday. See you soon. Bye.